Hey there, you guys. Welcome back. Hope you guys have been well. I have not been around, as you know. Uh, I've been busy doing other things. Um, plants have been taking a back burner to, to life. Um, and uh, it's been fun. But uh, I still don't have a garden outside. Well, I have a little bit of a front yard garden, but uh, we don't have grading approval, so we can't really start digging and planting anything substantial um, because they could come and rip everything all up. Once we get our grading approval, because it's a new development, um, we can start doing whatever we want. But right now, we can't put a shed in, we can't put a patio in, we can't really put, we could put a garden in, but uh, if they come rip it out, that's at our cost. So, um, well, they'll rip it out for free and put the grass back in, but uh, if I have any trees or anything in there, they, they won't replace them. So, uh, we're just not doing anything at the moment. Um, so, <clears throat> what are we going to do in this video? You see this anthurium here. This is an anthurium that I got many, 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 many years ago. I don't know. I, I think close to seven or eight years ago. I guess many, many, many is too many many's. <laughs> so it's it's uh, it started to vine. Uh, anthuriums are uh, epiphytes that uh, that kind of ramble up trees and do their own thing, uh, and that means that they they develop root systems. <clears throat> maybe above the soil and, and they kind of attach themselves to say trees or or maybe they're rambling along the, the forest floor who knows but um, anyway these are now starting to look a little bit more viney than than uh, you see in the, the store and and they're harder to maintain this way because uh, the roots don't develop if the air isn't really humid if you have them in a greenhouse environment those roots should grow longer and 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 nourish the plant but uh, in my dry house, they don't, uh, they don't amount to anything. As you can probably see here, uh, there is uh, aerial roots that are starting to develop. And these, once I, once I cut this uh, off, they will develop in soil. So it'll be off to a head start, and it'll be racing along uh, once, once we get things uh, in, in, uh, in better shape. So I wanted to bring you along. We're going to revive this plant, make it nice again, hopefully. <laughs> uh, I really enjoy it. Upstairs, it really grows well in the window. It always has flowers. I would like to multiply that. I'd like to get more and more blooms. So I think by, by cutting it back and uh, putting the, the, the tops in soil and then the, the bases should start um, producing offsets again. Uh, so I should be able to multiply the plant and get more, more flowering uh, points. So anyway, uh, you might have been wondering what I've been doing with my time off. For one, we've been dealing with the house. That takes a lot of our time. And then I've also started making bath bombs in my spare time. I really enjoy this. I find it very therapeutic to, to make them. And I like using them too. Um, but they're a lot of fun. I've finally perfected my, uh, my recipe. And uh, it's a lot of fun to make. So that has been taking up a lot of my weekends. Just playing around. Uh, and it smells really, really nice sometimes with all of the essential oils and, and, and fragrance oils in the house. But, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Keeps me out of trouble. Uh, keeps me away from this sort of thing. But I needed a little bit of a break from plants to make me enjoy it again when I come back into it. It started to feel more like a job uh, because, as you know, I have a lot of plants. And, and uh, I've been having a lot of issues with, uh, with insects, spider mites. I've had thrips, uh, mealybugs, scale all kinds of things and it's kind of a losing battle when uh, here in Ontario uh, Canada because uh, systemic pesticides are not legal here so uh, for many of you that are able to just water their plants with a systemic insecticide uh, I can't do that and 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 in turn it makes it so that when these biting insects uh, or the sucking insects bite into the leaves uh, with the systemic, they get a bit of the pesticide and it kills them. So I don't have that that option. And as you probably know, mealybugs and scale, they hide in the crevices of the plant. So you think you got them all until your plant flowers, and then and then a week later, you got mealybugs all over the inside of the uh, flower. So you're you're doing all this work for for nothing, uh, and it's just been really defeating. So I I've been um, I've, exp I've been experimenting with different types of um, uh, insecticides, well, they're homemade insecticides, I guess, sprays, and uh, I found one that works really, really well for spider mites. 
Uh, melees seem to not be as big of a problem, and same with scale. I, I'm, I'm doing better with scale. Thrip is, is a little harder because Thrip likes to, to deal with the flowers. Um, so you see like uh, flecking on, on leaves and flecking on flowers. It's not really a big deal, but it, it can. If you get a big enough infestation, it's, it can be uh, troublesome. But uh, it seems to work on everything. Uh, if you want to know what I'm using for an insecticide, uh, please let me know. It's all kind of natural stuff. I used to use the rubbing alcohol and water and dish soap. And uh, I found that, that it would work for like a day or two, and then I come back and, and the webbing would be back for, for spider mites. So, and, and also mealybugs, I'd have to do it like every day, and, and I, I don't have time to do that. So this one I spray on usually once a week. I haven't done it in a few weeks, and I'm noticing some of the, uh, the spider mites are, are coming back on, on one or two plants, so I've got to do it again. So I just need to make up some more mixture. Anyway, let's get back to this video. Uh, revitalizing this lovely anthurium that has seen better days. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do, I've got some trusty scissors. Uh, I should actually get some, some pruners over here. I have some pruners. Ah! This lovely flower is in my, uh, my sight line. Hi. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm not able to, let's move this around so that you can see it on the lower camera. Move this pot. I'm going to put it into this pot here. This is going to be what it's going to go into. So, let's move this down. Are you able to see? Yeah, that's that's the crown. I've got babies growing off to the side. These are anthuriums here. Uh, let's, there we go. So I'm just going to take the pruners and I'm going to leave about, I'm going to say four to six inches of stem and I'm just going to chop it right off. Right like that. Just easy peasy. You'll notice that there's all kinds of, and the leaves are getting in the way. There's all kinds of little roots here. These are going to be fantastic. They're going to nourish the plant. They're going to start growing basically the second they get into soil, the moist soil. Um, yeah, so we're going to cut the other one off. Same deal. There we go. So I chopped this one off. You can just take off some of the uh, old husks of leaves, just like so. You don't have to get it perfect. Adds to compost in the soil, you know. So now what we're left with is this horrible, horrible mix of craziness. I'm going to get my, uh, my blue tarp and put it over the table and we'll be right back because we're going to dump this out and we're going to take off all of the old soil. This soil is old, old. Like I said, it's probably, uh, I'm going to say, at least at least seven years old. And uh, it's lost all of its nutrients. It's, it's really time for, uh, for a change. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we're all set up here. <laughs> Let's take the saucer off the pot. We're just going to dump this thing out. So I keep this plant on the dry side. Um, I'm sure it would prefer to be kept on the moist side, but, uh, yeah, I, I just, it's upstairs and, and, uh, it doesn't get a lot of, uh, visibility. It likes the window it's in though. So I water it. I try to water it once a week, but I find that the soil is dry, but it could just be the soil surface. I find that when, um, when soil gets old, it loses the cap uh, capillary action, so it could be sitting in, in water up to here um, the first two or three inches, but the top seems bone dry. So I'm just going to tease the, the soil off the roots, get rid of any dead roots. I'm sure that there's quite a few. This is also going to um, breathe new life into this plant, uh, not only because we're, um, we're giving it new soil, but because the roots down here are probably getting a little bit old. Uh, these new roots up at the top, um, that I, where, where are they? These new roots are going to be much more um, active, I think, for the plant once they start to grow. So it'll only be a benefit to, to chop this thing back. I could have probably um, just got a deeper pot or something and potted it deeper, but 
I didn't really feel like doing that. I've got some golden pothos in here as well. I'm just going to remove those for now. There we go. I'm not sure if I'll put these back in. I, I, I'm not sure. I think I'll just toss these pothos. They've seen better days. This is a really old plant. I might uh, take cuttings and put them elsewhere, but I don't know if I'll put them back in this pot. Let's just put them off to the side for now. This video is about this anthurium. We've got some little baby anthuriums here too. I might actually cut these back to, maybe not today, maybe I'll plant this a little deep and give them a little bit more time to, to grow and be strong. Okay. Notice I'm not being like crazy gentle. I'm just uh, mingling my fingers through the soil and uh, the soil is falling off. I'm not really pulling. I'm not. I'm not being really bad with it, but I'm. I'm being very quick. Okay. So let me just get rid of this. Uh, this old soil, and we'll start by uh, potting this thing up. <laughs> so I keep my soil in a Rubbermaid container. Uh, I usually get the big bales of soil, and. Uh, I find that it's a lot cheaper and I store them in the house. I keep the big bale outside and then I store um, the the soil, the, the, the tote in the house. So it's just a regular all-purpose potting soil. This one is by Promix and uh, it's the high porosity so there's a lot of perlite in there. It's a peat moss based uh, soil and uh, I really enjoy using this one. And uh, a garden center near me uh, has it really, really cheap. I think I spend uh, $35 for the whole bale. And that, uh, that's, I forget how many liters that is. That's, that's, uh, it's a lot. So I really appreciate the, that garden center having such great prices. So I'm going to put in some soil into here. And uh, I'm going to go, well, that's probably good for now. I've got about four or five inches of soil in the bottom and I put some paper towel in the bottom. These drainage holes are huge in this thing so I wanted to make sure that uh, that uh, uh, <laughs> that no soil escaped. I think the drainage holes were probably about an inch. So as you can see the, the, the rootstock is quite far down there. I think we've still got about three inches or four inches to the top of the pot. I'm not going to be filling it right to the top. I'm going to leave about an inch at the, uh, from the top. So I'm just going to pour the soil in. This will make it so that these small little babies off to the side will, uh, will be buried a little bit. So their little aerial roots will, uh, will find new homes in the soil. Uh, strengthening the plant, we should see that these start to grow a little bit faster. All right. Oh, this is cute. I don't know whether you're able to see this. This little baby, be able to see it's going to start to flower. Can you see the little uh, the little red poking out there? Is this one doing? Oh, this one's doing it too. I believe this one's going to flower too. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, plants love me. I just don't have the time all the time to to care for them like uh, like I should. But I find. I find that a little bit of neglect actually uh, does plants good. Uh, you kill more plants with, with um, overcare, watering them too often, um, playing in the soil too often. They, they like to be left alone, let to do their own thing. Um, it's good to let things, <clears throat> well not everything, but it's good to let most things dry down between waterings. Um, if like if the soil surface is dry, sometimes down an inch or two, uh, it's still quite moist. So if you're adding more water, it it looks like you're doing it good, but but it might not actually need water. So now with these guys, we got these lovely um, cuttings. I'm just going to poke them in. I should use my finger instead of just jamming. Jamming works too, but... Uh, Sure, I'm sure the plant would like me to be a little bit more gentle. All right. Okay. We got it in there pretty good. 
we're going to do this one. I don't have a wider stick. Wish I had a wider stick. Okay. Do do do. Okay. Got a nice, a nice huge hole in there. All right. Now we're going to try to poke this one in. Trying to be gentle yet firm. <laughs> gentle yet firm. There we go. So now that we've uh, poked it and prodded it, we'll add some more soil because we've packed it in a little bit. And because these are epiphytes, uh, if you wanted to, you can add a little bit of um, like an orchid bark or a, or a, um, a more coarse perlite to this uh, mix. You can also anything to make some some uh, really um, really um, uh, I don't want to say dense compost. That doesn't sound right. Um, something to make the the mix more porous. Uh, these guys like a lot of airflow to the roots because they're they're growing in trees and just they're not really in deep soil. They wanna they wanna be in like the leaf litter or or something like that. So there's a lot of airflow, kind of like an orchid. Uh, so just keep that in mind when choosing the mix. You don't want to have something too, too dense. I wouldn't be potting this in, in say, a garden soil. So now we will put the, uh, the planting is now done. We've got this beautiful pot. It looks so nice. I love it. I love it. So I've got some water here. Normally I don't water in after, uh, after my planting. I do it after off, off camera. But I will do it today because I don't want to forget. So I want to give it a nice good drink. Peat moss doesn't take uh, uh, water very quick. It, uh, it takes a little bit to absorb it, but uh, once it starts, all it, it absorbs really, really well. So um, I'm going to water this again uh, probably this afternoon, and then I'll probably water it again a little bit maybe tomorrow, but we'll see. We'll see how it is. I don't want to make it soggy, but I just want to make sure that, that I water it a little bit at a time. Uh, you'll notice when you water it first, it will everything will float to the surface, and uh, you just want it to to grab that water. I want to make sure that the um, where the roots are on the cuttings uh, get nice moist contact. That's what's going to cause those to start to to elongate and grow. Uh, right now they're dormant because they don't have any uh, moisture and they're just waiting. They're they're they they want to do their thing. So. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a little bit long-winded, but uh, the plant looks nice. It looks nicer now than what it did uh, uh, about 20 minutes ago. So <laughs> hopefully it enjoys its, its, new, uh, its new life. So anyway, until next time, everybody, happy growing. Show me what you're growing. Uh, give me some inspiration. It's in April now, and we just finished having this ice storm and snow. The, the, everything is covered. I had bulbs growing, and uh, everything is covered with a few inches of snow. I thought it would be melted in a day, but it's still there. It's been a few days, and uh, it's just so frustrating. So anyway, I do need to see some beautiful spring uh, flowers and, and what you're doing. Uh, it's so inspirational. I, I do check the Plants and Things What's Growing page often, but I, I, don't, uh, I don't have a lot of time to make a lot of comments. But I do scroll through, check all the photos. I mean, not all of them. There's a lot. There's like 40,000 people in there, that group now, so it's hard to keep up with. But, um, yeah. Anyway, show me what you're growing, and until next time, everyone, happy growing.